Good afternoon and welcome to the Joukowsky Institute for Archaeology in the Ancient World and the Archaeology and Futurity Conference. My name is Matt Riley and I'm a postdoc here at the Joukowsky Institute. As the organizer of this event, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome visitors and members of the Joukowsky Institute community to what promises to be an exciting two days of presentations and discussion. This afternoon we will hear from our distinguished keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Laurent Olivier, who will be introduced momentarily. I'll postpone my thank yous and introductions till tomorrow morning, but I would be remiss if I didn't from the outset thank the Joukowsky Institute for their extremely generous support in hosting this event and acknowledging the efforts of Sarah Sharp and Jess Porter. So thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I would like to let everyone know that there are restrooms located in the basement of this building. Uh, and for those of you who will be joining us tomorrow morning, um, there will be a breakfast reception right outside this room at 8.30, and our first session will begin promptly at 9 o'clock. Also, for those of you who are active on social media, we will have two hashtags used throughout this event. The first is hashtag J-I-A-A-W for the Joukowsky Institute, and the second, hashtag Futurity, will be used specifically for this conference. I had to ask how to set that up and how it works. <laughs> I do not use Twitter. Uh, finally, following our keynote address, I'd like to invite everyone to join us for a reception uh, here at Rhode Island Hall. I should also mention, however, that the Hoffenreffer Museum is hosting a special event at 5.30 this evening in Solomon Hall, directly across the green. Dr. Anna Sofair, director of the Solstice Project at Chaco Canyon, is here and will be showing a special screening of her new documentary entitled The Mystery of Chaco Canyon. As you can tell, it's a very active archaeology community here at Brown, so if you're interested, I encourage you to make the trip across the green following this event. At this time, however, I'd like to turn things over to the director of the Joukowsky Institute, Dr. Peter Van Damelen. Thank you very much. Um, as Matt just introduced me, my name is Peter van Dommelen and I'm the director of the Tchaikovsky Institute as of this year and been for several years as one of the Tchaikovsky family professors. At the Institute, um, we're an institute of Mediterranean archaeology, archaeology and the ancient world in a sort of broader sense. And um, one of the, uh, well, as Matt was already in indicating, we have we run a very active program of all sorts of uh, activities here, and uh, we, including uh, it's not just us, the faculty, running all these programs, but it's indeed a very active group of uh, postdoctoral scholars who take a leading role in that. And this conference, therefore, is one of those outcomes. Uh, we're really pleased um, that Matt uh, has uh, pulled this uh, conference together on what is an exciting team, as, you can, as we can tell, this Friday afternoon, so many people. It's one of these very first days, uh, nice bright sunshine, so many people turning up uh, in this room here. And it's a, a really interesting uh, selection of speakers that have been brought uh, together here, um, who are lined up tomorrow, and whom Matt will introduce uh, in more detail tomorrow. My task for now, which is a very pleasant one, is to introduce our keynote speaker for today, who is Professor Laurent Olivier, uh, who's traveled to us uh, to Rhode Island here from Paris, where he is the curator in chief at the National, uh, French National Museum of Archaeology at Saint Germain en Laye. Um, Professor Olivier completed his PhD uh, at the University of Cambridge in 1995, and that's not just uh, some biographical detail, but it's actually very relevant um, for points I'll come to in a minute. What I first would want to say, sort of in basic archaeological terms, if you sort of, as archaeology is when we try to define people, it usually goes in terms of region, period, and so on. And in those basic terms, really basic terms, uh, we could introduce Professor Olivier as an Iron Age archaeologist, a specialist in funerary, funerary archaeologists of the European continent, especially Celtic archaeology, and he's also long worked in commercial archaeology that is in close conjunction with the wider public and the state, to put it sort of in broad terms. These three elements are significant because they turn up in different ways and they underlie his work uh, that he's perhaps uh, better known for abroad, I must say. In France, people might uh, perhaps look at it differently. His reason for being here, for giving the keynote uh, speech, is his recent book uh, on what archaeology is about, uh, The Abyss of Time, that as Matt describes in the introduction to the conference. And uh, this book sort of is articulated along two major strands that are, however, interwoven in various ways. Those strands are time and politics. And that interest in time is something that's not recent, that actually under, 
uh, was already in his doctoral thesis at Cambridge, which was called The Shift of Time, <coughs> Archaeology of Funerary Assemblages in the West Halstead Phase. And so his, and you can see sort of how that resonates with his recent book, which came out in 2008 in French, Le Son de la Bine du Temps, and which was translated in 2011. But there's also a series of articles that several of you might know by him. His 99 article in Tim Murray's Time and Archaeology book about the Hochdorf, princely grave and funerary assemblages. Uh, the past of the present, an, an, an article in Archaeological Dialogues. And also more recently, his contribution to uh, Alfredo González Ruibal's book on reclaiming archaeology, The Business of Archaeology is the Present. And that is actually a title that very much uh, defines his thinking, as we had the pleasure of talking about the other day in the seminar here, um, and that I thought also sort of uh, sets the tone and is precisely what uh, this keynote speech uh, is about. The final point I'd like to make is this other strand sort of interest in history, politics of archaeology, uh, that's mostly uh, evident in another recent book, um, Nos Ancêtres les Germains, Our Forefathers Germans. Uh, and that's something you should take into account, written by a French scholar. <laughs> um, I think that's an important point <laughs> to underline here. It came out in 2012, and that is not just any other uh, archaeological historiography, but it is a book that is uh, right, that sort of took its place right in the middle of French uh, political debate about school books and a whole division. If you just Google, uh, the French title of it, you will find a whole series of uh, discussions uh, about uh, th those things in the French press. <coughs> I won't uh, continue much longer trying to second guess what this uh, keynote lecture is about. I think uh, it's much better that we hear it directly from uh, Laurent Olivier, and therefore I invite him to uh, take the stand here. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to, to thank the Joukowsky uh, Institute and uh, its director, uh, Peter van Dermelen, for, for their very kind invitation, as well as uh, Matthew uh, Reilly and uh, Jessica Porter, who took care of, uh, of having me uh, coming here. So what I'm going to say may, may look a bit uh, disturbing and uh, sometimes uh, irritating. Uh, I, I'm not coming here uh, telling you this is the truth, this is what you have to believe in, or this is right, and the other way of looking at things are different. Just take it as, uh, as it is. It are uh, just uh, weird ideas from the other side of the, of the ocean, uh, <laughs> from, from the very strange country where people are drinking wine. Uh, so what I would like to, to, to develop is just uh, other ideas, you know, uh, uh, from ideas about archaeology from a, from a different angle, which are based on something very, very basic, which is uh, the, the relationship that archaeology enjoys with, uh, I don't know how to call it, with things, with, with materiality in, uh, in, in some way. Archaeology as a, as a discipline of things and places. So, what is archaeology? about. Uh, archaeology is the study of the past from their material remain. So this is not really the study of the past itself. This is the study of what remains from the past and what remains from the past are remains which are present into the present, into our present. When we are looking at the Roman period, we are looking at the Roman period today, as it is today. And this is the reason why it's possible to dig hole and to find stuff in the ground, since it's here, it's with us. Uh, when you look at the materiality of the past, here you have a, a picture which has been shot uh, at a certain hour in the day, at a certain uh, moment in time. Uh, it was an instant. At that time, it, it took several minutes to take a picture, but it, it was an instant. And, and for us, you know, it's floating in time. We, we see it's an old picture. We don't know exactly where it, it, it has been shot. It, it's in Paris, in fact. It's, a, it's along the, the Seine River. We see it's old, you know. We, we recognize the, the strange hats, the strange uh, clothes of the people. But we are absolutely unable to date it. Time is floating. Time is, 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 is becoming probabilistic from an archaeological perspective. So time in history is a point in time, it's an event, and time in, time in archaeology is rather 
a probability of dating, as you well know. We, we can date this picture since we can uh, estimate that what is before, what is after, it's, it's a relative time of, of our career. It's a, it's a first thing. And the, the second thing is that what remains presently of that are just accidental remains, you know? Uh, the people have disa as long disappeared, of course, they are close uh, as well, the building as well, everything has disappeared. What remains is just uh, debris, in fact. It's, it's junk, it's accidental. So again, we are working on the materiality of the past, but it's not really the materiality of the past. It's what, what is decaying from, from the past. And so this is also an, an, an another distance what we are enjoying with, with the past itself. So, in fact, as, a, a, as I said, past things were made in the past, but they are found in the present. Uh, this is why, in fact, when we are uh, gathering a uh, thing, we are putting together things with, with, which were belonging originally to different past. Uh, and, and this is the reality, uh, the reality of, of the present. So it means that keeping and preserving remains from the, from the past uh, it's nothing else but uh, bringing together uh, pieces that were originally made in the in different past. In other words, <coughs> the present, uh, and it's something that, I, that I'm going to, to, to develop later on, the present, archaeologically, I mean, uh, uh, re relatively to the question of materiality, the present is not what is happening now. Now, archaeologically, here, it is happening absolutely nothing. We are just here together, but we are not digging any hole, you know, we are not painting any wall. And when this uh, meeting will be over, nothing will, will remain from that. So it exists historically, but it doesn't exist archaeologically. What exists archaeologically are all the remains from all the past with which are all together uh, in, the <laughs> in, in this moment. So this is why, in fact, the past is not in the past. This, this, this is a, a, a dream. This is an illusion. The past is entirely and exclusively into the present, within the present, as an archaeological thing. So the past, in fact, is not the past. And the past, when it was the past, it was not the past I ever. <laughs> not at all. Uh, when the past was a material entity, it was nothing else as the present as it is now. It, it was in, in a different time, but it was as well the collection, the assemblage of all the remains from all the different pasts which, which were there all together. So in fact, it's an illusion and, and to, 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 to say that, uh, for instance, uh, in the Roman period, it, it was a Roman time. <coughs> It's maybe true in, in, in historical terms. It was under the reign of such emperor, or it was after this revolt, or, or after this, uh, this conquest. But archaeologically, uh, during the Roman period, uh, it was not specially Roman. It was also uh, a different assemblage of all the past duration which were there, from the Paleolithic time to the Neolithic, to all the period which, which, which were together. And so it's, it's, it's another reason why, in fact, uh, the present is, is something uh, which is rather multi-temporal. Since <laughs> when you look at things, things, in order to, to, to exist, have to be maintained. It's like this building, you know, uh, as you have seen, uh, maybe in visiting the, the building, it's, a, it, it's, it's an ancient construction uh, from the 19th century. So the wall are 19th century, but in order to, to exist now, it has to be kept and maintained, you know, this, this place uh, had, had to be refurbished and in 20 years, with, uh, if, if we want to maintain it as, as a place for, for teaching and listening, we would have to change the, the walls, the ceilings, uh, the floor and so on. So in order to be kept alive, and it's, a, it's also something difficult to think, in order to be kept alive, archaeologically, things have to be transformed, they have to be changed. It's like in my house. I'm living in an in a 18th century house, but if I want to keep it as a house, if I want to keep the kitchen as a kitchen, yeah, it was too bad, but, uh, but I had to, to, to change everything. In order to, to, to keep my kitchen as a kitchen, I had to change it, I had to transform it. If I would have kept the kitchen in the state of the, of the 19th century, I would have created a museum, but not a kitchen anymore. So, in fact, it's, it's, a, it's a thing which is difficult to, 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 to think. But uh, in archaeological terms, things in order to be, to, to be maintained, in order to be 
kept alive, have to be replaced, uh, have to be reproduced all the time. And this is the reason why, when you look at archival feature, here down you have a, the, an aerial picture of a, of a Celtic farm in northern France. As you see, it's, it's a superimposition of structure. Uh, it's, it's, they have been created in order to maintain the farm as a farm in, in, in the Gallic period. This is why, in fact, uh, the, the present doesn't exist uh, uh, in archaeological term. In archaeological term, the present, as an archaeological event, is reproduction, is, is reiteration of things. And if you don't do so, uh, in fact, nothing uh, happened ar archaeologically. And this is what happened most of the time. Most of the time, nothing happened in archaeological term. Just try to remember as people, when it is the last time that you have created an, ar an archaeological event, when you weren't excavating, you know? Uh, probably a long time ago. It's a long time ago that you have repainted a wall, that you have dug a, uh, dug a hole in order to plant a tree. There, these are archaeological events. Uh, the rest are historical events. They are not archaeological, in fact. So uh, the present. In, in, is made again uh, is multi uh, temporal. Uh, on, on the left corner, you, you have a picture of a of a pavement. Uh, uh, it's a picture I, 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 I shot in, in Cambridge in, in UK. But uh, but I've seen in the street you you have uh, perfectly comparable pictures. Uh, this is the skin of the present, and, and, and if you look at it, it's, it's made of a lot of, of pages, uh, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of, a, of, a, of, of tiny fragments. It has been repaired, it has been fixed. So the present, as a surface, as an event, you know, is made of all the past events which are still remaining today, which, which are sti still, still with us at, uh, in, in, at the moment. So in fact, the present, uh, is not only what is happening now, but more secretly, I would say, it is made also of all the past things which are still active today. And again, uh, from uh, 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 an historical perspective, it's something which, 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 uh, which, is, which has no sense, but it, it has in, in archaeological term. Uh, the, the, the picture what you see in the, in the left corner uh, it's called uh, the Camino del Rey in, in, in Spanish. It's in, uh, it's in New Mexico. And uh, in fact, today, it was the old trade that the, that the Spaniards, uh, you know, they, they built in, uh, at, at the end of the, of the 16th century when they were looking for the city of gold. But they never found, of course. They found the Pueblos. But uh, this road was created by them. Uh, it's, it's a royal road, the royal Spanish road. And today, it is still active. It is still active, but as, as you can see it, it's, it's impossible to recognize it. It's just a, a track in a field, a, a, a tractor track. This is its way to be kept alive, to, to be maintained. So uh, uh, this is a, a thing that we see very commonly in archaeology, mm -hmm. is that ancient features are still active in the present, but in, in a very uh, hidden way. Uh, this is not uh, the, 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 the royal war I anymore. It's, it's, it's still active under another appearance. It's still, uh, it's still disguised in, 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 in some way. So in fact, what is happening is that past things, or all faults they are terminated, you know, all faults the past is over forever. Past things are still working in, in, in the present. They are still active. <coughs> and it's difficult to describe this process what is it? Uh, I would describe it as, as some sort of material memory. It's something which is difficult to understand, since memory is supposed to be uh, something which is only shared by human. But obviously, when you look at things, you see, and I don't mean that things have a soul or, or, or memory or anything like that. But anyway, we have to acknowledge that something is maintained over time. Something is reproduced. Constraints, such as linear constraints, are still active today. And this kind of thing is not something uh, purely uh, inactive. It's, uh, the, the, the past is still uh, working in, in some way into, into the present. So in other words, it's, and again, it's something which goes uh, against or uh, a conventional uh, understanding of history. Uh, the present is not really of, of all time. The present is also more than the continuation of the past. It's, this is the action of, of the past into, into the present in archaeological term. 
So this is the reason why, in fact, uh, when you're studying the materiality of the past, you're studying <coughs> the different duration of the past which are still working uh, in the present. So the present is, is the physical accumulation of past duration, and all and job is, is about that. And uh, in fact, uh, Benedetto Croce, the, the, the Italian historian, he wrote once that any history is a contemporary history. Uh, he meant that when you're doing any, uh, any history, any study of, of the past, you're doing it from the point of view of the present. And I think we may translate that perfectly uh, into archaeological term and saying that any archaeology is basically an archaeology of the present in the sense that the present encapsulates all the duration of the past. But we see, and it's not only a, a, some, some abstract point of view, we see the present, we see the past, sorry, excuse me, from the present, from the materiality of the present. This is the reason why when we are looking at the past, in fact, we are materially, we are doing nothing else but looking at the present. So, in fact, uh, in archaeological terms, the present is not what is happening now. Uh, it is what is kept going and being as things and places. Uh, in other words, uh, the present contains a material memory of, of, of a diversity of past, which are still acting today as archaeological uh, features. This, this is exactly what, is, what it is happening now. So looking at the present is therefore looking at some sort of living material memory, the memory of, of the material world in, 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 in some ways. So uh, as you can see or feel, uh, I believe that we, are, that we are kept into some sort of contradiction uh, as archaeologists, the contradiction that we have to solve. Since, uh, since its, its very foundation, archaeology has always has for ambition to tell something about the past, to tell how the past was, to reconstruct the past. Uh, from its very beginning, you know, it has uh, some sort of historical ambition, you know, to tell what was happening before, what was happening in the ancient times. And whereas when you are looking at the materiality of, of, of the past, you see that, uh, in fact, uh, we are dealing with uh, an, another kind of material. It's not an historical material. It's not text, you know. The, the, the remains doesn't don't tell us what wha really what was happening in, in the past. They are telling us something else, you know. They they are uh, bearing some some other kind of uh, of meaning, which is more on the side of memory rather than on the side of uh, of history. So uh, I this is the reason why I believe that in fact when we are doing archaeology. In fact, we are exploring this material memory of the world. So again, uh, it's, it's going against uh, the basic understanding of the past. It means that when we are specializing ourselves, when we are doing just Egyptian archaeology, Greek archaeology, Celtic archaeology for myself, or being specialized in the Roman period, in fact, uh, I wouldn't say that we are doing archaeology in the wrong way. But on the other hand, we are cutting uh, the perspective of, of the, of the multi-durational uh, past. Uh, what is interesting uh, is what was happening before those periods, their prehistory. And what is interesting also, what it's what was happening after those periods, <coughs> their post-history in, 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 in some ways. And archaeology encompass all those durations. When, when you're doing Celtic archaeology, for instance, it would be meaningless to, to forget what, what was uh, building in the Bronze Age and the Neolithic. As well, it would, it would be meaningless uh, to forget uh, the transformation of those remains up to us, up to, uh, up to our, our contemporary times. So this is another reason why uh, when, when, you, when you cut uh, archaeological features or, or sites, uh, you see that, uh, in fact, this is, this is a picture that you have on the on, 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 the, on the right side. It, it's, a, it's a section across uh, a series of ditches, uh, as you can see. And those ditches, in fact, were, were um, uh, features which were built by the Romans in the south of France. It's, it's, a, it's a features to, uh, to set up uh, uh, field systems. 
And uh, looking at, at more data at the stratigraphy, you see that there is a couple of ditches. Uh, they have been filled they, and they have been uh, re dug. And at a certain moment of time, they were completely filled. They were no visi no, not visible anymore. Uh, some sedimentation occurred. And those ditches were recreated, you know, again. They, they, they come to life back again. And today, uh, you see, of course, nothing of those ditches today. But they, their limits, their, their special constraints are maintained. And you see, at the moment, it's, it's, it's a line of tree or it's a line of bush. It, it, there are still uh, field limits. So in a sense, uh, what is uh, basically uh, uh, important to study is not only this event of, of the Roman period, what happened in the, in the first century AD, the creation of the field system. OK, but what in is interesting also to study and to look at is what was happening after. And this strange uh, process under which past events, you know, uh, come to play again uh, uh, after uh, after a certain period of latency. And again, this is something which goes uh, uh, against uh, the convention on understanding of history. In history, uh, causes follow sequentially each other. In archaeology, not. You see that a cause could be very remote and can come back after several centuries or even, even several millennia of latency. Uh, this is the kind of process we, we are dealing with, which are absolutely not understandable uh, under classical or, or traditional historical terms. Uh, such uh, a situation, if, if you begin to take that in, in, into account, is, is I believe, <coughs> is, is, uh, is the evidence of a, of a, of a turning point in, in, in paradigms that are driving the, the understanding of archaeological evidence. Uh, I believe that at the moment, I don't know when it has begun, uh, it has begun obviously several years ago, but uh, we are uh, uh, in a moment where the traditional understanding of the past is changing, it, 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 is, it is moving. What is changing is the traditional relationship we enjoyed we, with the past. Uh, as, as you can see, we can approach the past from a different angle and from a different uh, manner, which is more dynamic. Uh, the, the understanding of uh, the historical processes also uh, is questioned. You know? It doesn't work as it works in history or, or in anthropology or in, in ethnography. It works in another way. We, we have to explore that. And also, what, is the, 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 what constitutes the evidence of the past is challenge. The past, as, as I have stressed very heavily, is not only the thing which were made in, 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 into the past. They are also uh, uh, present things. So uh, I believe what, what is happening now at the moment, it's, you know, it's very tiny at the moment. We, we are very scattered to, to, to feel vo vo those things. But what is happening at the moment uh, is not specific to, to archaeology. It is happening also with the other disciplines which are dealing with the past and, and with time. And it, it has happened uh, some years ago in history. And this, this uh, what we can call this epistemological turn or this theoretical turn uh, may be called presentism. <coughs> so what is presentism? It, it, it's an idea which has been proposed some years ago by a French historian whose name is Francois Hartog. And Artog is a, is a specialist of, a, of, of, of ancient history, of Greek history. And uh, Artog was studying uh, the writing of history, and especially the relationship we enjoy with the past, the present, and the future. And what uh, stress Artog, he says that, again, we don't know when it has begun, but at the moment, uh, we are not enjoying the same sort of relationship with the past what, that we enjoyed. Uh, in the last century, in the, in, 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 in the early 20th and, and uh, 19th century. Uh, at the moment, uh, the old present is cut from the past. And, and it's something which, is, which, which was, was very, uh, uh, very uh, evident at the turn of uh, around the, the middle of the 20th century. Uh, the past uh, is, not, is cut from, from, from the present. We, we are not the inheritant of the past. Uh, you know, uh, it's depending also uh, on, on history. In Europe, for instance, uh, we are not very proud of the past. Uh, we, we, we don't feel the inheritance of the, of the Euro European past. 
of, of, the, of the first half of the, of the 20th century. And the future, the future is, uh, is worrying at least. The, the future is threatening. So this means that in fact we are, we are glued, you, we, we are reduced to a relationship where we are just into the present. And uh, this is what exactly describe uh, uh, Artog. Uh, presentism I is that. Uh, it means that uh, history itself, the writing of history, it has changed. Uh, writing history in the 19th century was trying to explore how the past was building the present. Uh, it was trying to set up a continuity between past and present. And for French history and for European history at large, uh, there was a great hope uh, after the revolution, the French Revolution. It was the hope that after centuries of, uh, of, of oppression, uh, mankind was going to, to, to become free and that we were driving toward a, a very uh, happy society. But after the revolution, uh, you had the empire, which are not so great with Napoleon. Uh, then the king came back, then we have another empire, then we have a republic. And so history was going nowhere. And in, in, in some sense, Marx uh, was looking for some coherence in this history. Okay, uh, society and civilization is going nowhere. Wh what matters is it's, uh, it, it, it's a fight between places. This, is, this, is, this was some, some sort of, a, uh, of explanation. But what became uh, clear is that uh, the present uh, was not well, the, the past was not preparing the, the present. So that people from present time were cut from, from, from their past. Uh, this uh, specific uh, evolution of our, of our uh, specific change of our relation with time <laughs> had been acknowledged uh, earlier by artists and by writers. Uh, when you look, for instance, at, uh, an, at all modern art, uh, that be began to develop just at the turn of, of the First World War. You see that, you know, that cut, that, that crisis uh, between the present and the past. And amongst those, uh, the German philosopher Walter Benjamin, and I think it's a, for me, it's, 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 it's a major offer uh, for, for archaeology. He understand that uh, uh, this new situation of the present, he was writing in the 30s, and his last essay was uh, written uh, in, in uh, 1940, uh, and it was called uh, Thesis on the, con on the Concept of History. And Benjamin uh, wrote that in urgency, you know, it's, it's, it's very small notes. And uh, what he stressed is that, he stressed that the, the situation of the present is completely challenging his story. We, we, we have to, we have to, to build an, a new relationship of the, with, with the past. And what he, what, what he saw is that the past, being encapsulated into the present, has no meaning in itself. And in fact, it, has, it only finds its significance by being acknowledged by the present. And this is, again, why uh, we have to rewrite history and archaeology almost at every generation. Uh, when you look at the, at the great work which were written in the 60s, for instance, it's great archaeology, but it's archaeology of the 60s. Uh, we have to write an archaeology of, uh, of, of our time. It's the same thing with history. Uh, we, we are looking for, for, uh, for evidence of the past that may answer some question about the present. This is the reason why, for instance, we are more and more interested about environment in, 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 in archaeology and in, in history, because it's, it's a problem for, for today. It wasn't such a problem in the 50s. Nobody, no, nobody cared about the issue we are interested at the moment. So this is the reason why, in fact, history has to be, has to be rewritten all the time. That, in fact, uh, history and archaeology is the meeting of the present, of the people of the present, with the past. Uh, it's not the reconstruction of the past from, from, from itself. And so, in that, uh, Benjamin claims that we, we need to, to build a new relationship with the past and to reject what he called historicism. And historicism was precisely the traditional uh, approach uh, of history, at least in, 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 in Europe. That idea that the past is bearing in itself its own, its own temporality. And that, in fact, doing archaeology or doing history is to reconstruct, to, 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 uh, to rebuild this uh, temporality of the past. He says it has no meaning, that kind of thing. It has only meaning uh, into the present. 
So Benjamin stressed the idea that this problem of the relation of the present with history is not just some academic game. This is a political problem. And for him, he, he wa in, in a very visionary way, he saw that it was also the fight uh, against barbary, uh, against Nazism, of course, but not only against Nazism, uh, against the barbary of the modern uh, Western uh, world. And when you look at, fa in fact, at the archaeology of our time, what, what, what are our time in terms of, of, of archaeological remain? What is very uh, uh, striking is that our contemporary history, the history of the 20th and, and early uh, 20, 21st century, has been dominated by massive destruction at a scale which was never reached uh, before. Uh, mass murder, as you see with, uh, in, uh, in, in, in on this picture from uh, an extermination camp in uh, 1945, but also uh, less dramatically with uh, urbanization, it has never reached such a scale, uh, transformation of the environment, where even talking about Anthropocene, uh, which means uh, a change uh, at a geological scale, which are happening since what, since maybe uh, uh, 50 years, uh, all of that is, is, completely, uh, is completely new. And all of that are questions that directly interest us. If archaeology is the study of the material transformation of the world under the urban activity, those things are directly archaeological. They are more archaeological than anything else, in fact. And if you want to look at, at that in terms of intensity, of course, the, the, the Paleolithic is almost nothing, actually, just uh, pieces of, uh, of flakes, you know, scattered. Uh, when you look at the transformation of the physical world, uh, all time, it's much more archaeological than any other time. And if you want to describe it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an age of transformation of, of the phys physical world. And we don't look at that. It is happening right now, but we don't look at that. Uh, what is happening just at the moment is a major transformation of, uh, of human occupation of, uh, of, of the earth. We are becoming more and more urban, less and less rural. The traditional rural civilization is disappearing. This is something that uh, Alfredo Gonzalez Ribal is studying. We don't know if this is temporary, if, if maybe in some centuries, uh, after the collapse of civilization, we are going to come back to more rural uh, civilization, that is, as happened in the early Middle Age, for instance, after the collapse of the, of the Roman Empire, or if this is something durable, if this is a major change, like, like what happened in the Neolithic. This is happening right now, and we don't look at it. And this is, this is deeply archaeological, what, 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 what is, uh, and it is concerned us as archaeologists. Uh, or Post-industrial society is based on that, idea, on that concept of risk society. This has been developed by uh, the German sociologist Ulrich uh, Beck. Uh, this is the specific link what we enjoy with technology. And uh, Günther Anders, a German philosopher, he wrote that uh, mankind is not anymore the subject of history. Technology is the subject of history. Uh, this is technology which is, which is uh, bringing such a uh, change, such massive uh, changes. So uh, technology, in fact, is producing risk, the, 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 the risk of a, of a major event, and those threats are, are put both on, on people and on environment. And the impact of the industrial world is creating very long-term effects. Uh, this is a picture of, of Fukushima here. Uh, there are children from Chernobyl here. Uh, the impact of those nuclear accidents uh, is going to be active for centuries, or maybe uh, millennia, or maybe a bit longer, if you consider the, the, the activity of, a, of, the, of the core uh, of, um, of, of, of the reactors. All of that will constrain uh, human occupation for the century or even the millennia we, which are going to come. And those things, are also to be taken into account as archaeological event. This, this is archaeology, transformation of the physical world. This is archaeological event. They are, they are major archaeological events of all time, and they need, they require uh, to, to, be, to be understood archaeologically.
And again, we are not looking at that. It is happening right now. It, it, it is, it, th th there are some, some, some archaeological uh, issues. We are over powerful since we are powerless, uh, wrote the German philosopher Günther Anders. Uh, and he was uh, talking about uh, Hiroshima and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and Nagasaki. He, wa he was, uh, he was uh, talking about the nuclear bomb. In fact, uh, what is uh, the common point is that uh, no one is responsible for such an uh, accident. Uh, the guy who pushed the button, uh, who dropped the bomb over uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, he didn't want that to do it. He has no hate against uh, the, the, the Japanese people. He was just ordered to push a button. But he did. Uh, the guy who, were, who, who created uh, Fukushima and, uh, and Chernobyl were not responsible for that. It was just an accident. So uh, we are not uh, individually responsible for what is happening, but the results are just beyond any imagination. Uh, the results are, are it, it's impossible to describe what it is, uh, a nuclear accident. It's impossible to encompass all its implication of, over time. So uh, in, in fact, uh, in, this, uh, in this world, the past is also uh, losing its, its value. Uh, in fact, uh, what matters, it's, it's, it's a permanent present. Uh, the, the we, we live in, in a world which has absolutely no comparison with the, with the past. We, we are aliens uh, compared to the people of the, of the 19th century and, and, and of, and of the, the earlier period. So this is a reason why uh, Gunther Anders called this, this time, and I'm going to, to come back to that, the time of the end. I, and it's, it's an on, uh, another angle, um, we are coming back again to, to, to this notion of why the present matters. This is why, in fact, in, in, in such an environment, uh, there is no future. This is what claimed the punk, huh? there, there no future. Uh, in, 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 in fact, when, when we are uh, suspended uh, under uh, such threats of massive destruction, uh, the, the relationship with, with the future is, is, uh, is completely altered, and, and we are just living into the present. This is what, just what we are, we are doing at the moment. So again, what drives the history is technology. And so therefore, time of history is broken. Uh, we are stuck in, in some sort of never-ending uh, present. This is what the, the, the German art historian Hans Ulrich Gumbrest uh, uh, stressed uh, some years ago. He called that this the strange uh, situation latency. You know, we are waiting, we, we are a bit in, in between. This is something that, that we really can, can feel at, at, at the moment, you know, with the new, new technology, uh, with the internet, with Google. Uh, what matters is only what is going on now. Uh, things which were very important some years ago, but, but we are uh, past at the moment, have no value anymore. What has value is what is happening just now. Uh, the future is unpredictable, the past is, is over, so again we are, we are, we are contained in, 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 this, uh, in this time of the, of, of the, of the present. So, Looking at the present, at the current, as what is happening now, is a proper field of archaeology. This is, this is why I think, I, I believe that uh, we have to explore uh, the entire field we, which is encompassed by, by the present. It, it means not only all the past, all the duration of the past, but also everything which is happening now and which is deeply archaeological. Uh, in fact, we, w what we are uh, studying, it's the impact of human activity uh, on the material world. And, and, and what is happening in, in the present are also uh, archaeological uh, problems. And in doing that, this is a political task. This is not only uh, something for academic, this is not only uh, research. In fact, uh, archaeology is always under threat of being separated from the social. And again, archaeology has no value if this is not a collective value. Uh, archaeology cannot, uh, cannot be confiscated by, uh, by individuals, uh, by companies. Uh, archaeology has only its value if it is a collective good, the, the collective good of, of, of mankind in some way. And so in doing archaeology, in studying the impact 
that the transformation of the, of the world is having, we are maintaining our political role, in fact. And in not doing it, we are collaborating uh, to, uh, to the separation of the present and the past. I, I'm, I'm going to, to come back to that later. So if archaeology is the study, again, of the maturity of the past, then it is much more concerned than the present than anything else. The hum human impact on the material world is much more dramatic and long-lasting today than it has been before or time. <coughs> so this is why we have to look at the change. But we have also to look at the present as a living memory, uh, the memory of all the past which are, we, we, which are still active uh, today. So the subject of archaeology, in fact, is this uh, very uh, bizarre relationships uh, between devastation of memory uh, and, trans and transmission of memory uh, between uh, erasure, between oblivion, and between uh, uh, conservation, uh, transmission. And I think this is, this is what, what we should do. So archaeology stands for the people. This, this, is, uh, this is something which we should not forget ever. Uh, or activity uh, has no meaning if this is not done for the collectivity. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, what you can see very clearly is that our modern world uh, is based on the erasure of memory. And uh, as you know, it is something which was peculiar uh, to America, to, to, to this country. Uh, American identity, not as American, but as modern, is based on the oblivion, is based on the erasure of other memories, the native memory, uh, the memory of uh, other uh, social or uh, ethnic groups, and the invention of a brave new world. But in, and, and coming from abroad, it's very striking how brutal it is, uh, and how empty it is. Uh, this is the cr the in, in fact, this is the creation of a, of a material culture which wants to have nothing to do with, with, with the past. And again, uh, Archaeology is not about that. Archaeology is, is restoring the memory. It's exhibiting the memory of the places and of the things. And this peculiar uh, process is political, again. Uh, it, it is restoring uh, the, I don't know how to call it, the, the, the collective uh, identity in some ways. And so the discipline of archaeology is the discipline which studies the, the material uh, memory. And it should be a discipline, <laughs> in fact, of resistance. This is what, what I believe. We, we, we resist, in fact. So uh, how to, 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 to conclude? Uh, what is at stake, uh, I, I think, is the, what uh, uh, Michel de Certeau uh, uh, called the repolitization re of the past uh, through the use of memory. And this is really the task of archaeology, I believe. We work for, for memory. Uh, we, we, we have to develop another uh, politic of memory. Uh, we have to place the past not aside of the present, as it is seen in conventional history and conventional archaeology, but uh, the past uh, inside the present. Uh, when uh, this traditional approach is looking for a sequential time, we are looking for a, a, a multi-directional uh, time. We are looking for not, not for a, a sequential, but for a, a periodical time. Uh, when uh, a conventional archaeology or conventional history is looking for uh, origins, we are looking for emergence. Uh, we are looking for transformation, uh, the transformation and the transmission at, at the same time. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a, a different uh, approach of the, of the past. So in other words, I believe that we have to use presentism, which is our, our condition, uh, as a tool, it, as, as, a, as an opportunity. Uh, presentism is an opportunity to explore the past and to explore the present and the future. But we have to use it, I think, in, in, in a political way. We have to use it to fight against presentism, which is basically the destruction of memory and the destruction of, of, of the environment. So in other words, I believe that archaeology equals resistance or means nothing. Uh, in fact, if we are not doing that, we are just, as uh, we have always been uh, doing before, 
uh, we are just reproducing the dominant ideology. Uh, people in the 30s didn't know, but they were doing that. People in the 60s too. And maybe at the moment, this is exactly what we are doing. We are reproducing uh, the dominant uh, ideology of the, uh, uh, of the Western world. Maybe, perhaps, uh, our, our political and social role is, 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 is not to, to work for that. Maybe by our subject, maybe by our subject we, we, are, we, are, we are requested to be rebels. Maybe, maybe, we are, we have to, maybe we have to politically fight against that. We are thinkers. Uh, archaeologically is not uh, digging uh, the ground to find shirts. If it's that, it has no meaning. Uh, we, we, uh, archaeology is a way to grasp the world, is a way to think. And uh, as digger, as, as archaeologists, we are thinkers, we are intellectuals. And the intellectuals have to invent another relation with the world. They, they have to, of course, they are, not, uh, they are not the people who have the truth. Uh, they are not the people who are uh, the most, uh, how to say, uh, the most legitimate uh, to talk. But we see the reality from, from, from I, I think from a very political angle, which is its materiality. No one is looking at that. And in looking at the materiality, we are looking at not at what it is said, not at the <coughs> discourse, not at the explanation. We are looking at what is committed, what is really happening, you know, uh, beyond, uh, uh, all the for beyond any uh, ideology. And uh, in doing so, we have something to say. We have something to say not only about the past, we have something to say about the present, about how the present is managed, and we have also something to say for the future. And our task is to work not only for, uh, for research, but our task is, is, is deeply a political one, since, uh, in fact, it's related to collectivity, to mankind. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is our work. And maybe we don't have the truth, uh, maybe we are not sure of what we are doing. Maybe we disagree with, 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 the other, with each other. We are not coming from the same cultural environment. We are not coming from the same social classes. We're not coming from the same intellectual background. But we can talk. And I think that it's much more important than anything to exchange ideas. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Though there is a whole uh, day coming up tomorrow, of course, uh, <laughs> with more contributions and discussions, uh, I'm sure we could have a couple of immediate questions or reactions uh, to this keynote lecture. I uh, thank you for your um, presentation. Uh, I couldn't help but think when you mentioned that the time in the present, or the time as the present, is a sort of paradox that it reminds me of the paradox um, of the theater, and particularly Hamlet's ghost, his father returning, something that is no longer, that is dead, that they're waiting to have come back. This thing is going to show up at any moment. And that paradox is interesting to me because it reminded me of Derrida's Spectres of Marx. Um, and in Spectres of Marx, um, Derrida's thinking about the paradox of what is destroyed coming back and the past as unfinished business, of course, in the way that Marx characterizes it in the 18th Brumaire. And I'm wondering if you could relate that idea of this unfinished business um, to your notion of resistance in archaeology and how maybe that resistance is, is a kind of a return of the unfinished business and archaeology is the attending to it, perhaps the attending to the return of revolution. Mm -hmm. This is what exactly what uh, Benjamin stressed with, with, with the relation with the past, exactly. Um, and he said also, and, and I think it's, uh, it's very relevant with what, what you are telling, it's, uh, but in fact, what we have to look at, it's, uh, it's the voice of the people who have, who have no voices, in fact. And th this is, uh, what is what, uh, what archaeology is about? Uh, Matthew, you, you're working on, on, on slavery uh, plantation. Uh, and you told me uh, yesterday or the day before that, in fact, at the moment, people want to, to reconstruct them in, in, in their beauty, you know, in, in the beauty of the, of the houses, the, the, the easy life, uh, how beautiful and, and how glamorous it, it was. But when you're digging it, you're digging the, the poor little houses, you're, you're finding, you know, the, the tiny shirt of the, of the people who were living there. And, and it, it was something else. It was the people who, who had no voice to, to talk. And 
Of course, uh, I believe that archaeology is is about that. You know, to this this unfinished job of the past. That and maybe to put to put it in some poetic way, uh, as uh, Benjamin uh, did it. Maybe those people of the past are are waiting for us. You know, they are they, they are waiting uh, for us to to give them a voice. And uh, maybe you remember uh, that in uh, in the extermination camp. Uh, after the war, uh, people fo uh, found what they called the Auschwitz Rolls. It was something very bizarre. Uh, in it was, uh, you know, uh, little pots, uh, and in 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 a pot they had put a piece of paper, and they wanted to describe because they knew that they they, they, they were going to to be killed and and to disappear, and and that the memory of that. The purpose of the camp was to erase any mem any, mem any memory of that again, the erasure of memory, and they had been written what was happening, you know, to to bring a testimony of that, and in fact they were waiting for us, you know, to find that it it was an address to to the future, uh, find us, uh, uh, and tell our truth, and uh, and and maybe we have we have such. Uh, so it's a mission with the past, you know. Uh, maybe maybe it's less dramatic than that. Uh, maybe it's 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 more more common. But anyway, it doesn't it doesn't lose any any value. M maybe we have also to give voices to the people who had no voices in the past. That's good. <coughs> so sorry. Uh, thank you very much. I feel like you started off really great for a wonderful uh, seminar tomorrow. Um, I, I guess I'm a little bit worried of the way you're talking about time, almost timelessness, right? I mean, and, and when I say that, right, because it's almost, so I, I think in some ways Foucault sort of developed this idea as well, right, that it's quite of quirky that the West uses history as its ethnological model. Right? I mean, we're one of the few cultures globally that actually think that things happen chronologically. And we have reified that, right? But that is also a capitalist expression, right? It's, 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 it's sort of a, an order of commodity production, right? And it's also a colonial expression, right? So archaeology is very much about a colonial ordering, and it's a colonial othering, right? So when you talk about the past, I don't think that we were as concerned globally or the West with the past as we were concerned with black and brown bodies, right? So it's sort of really interesting that you sort of put this panel at the end of sort of say, it's the people, and there were black and brown images up there which are not in this room. And I think that's really, really important, and that's really, really central, right? So that when you're talking about these ideas about the past, we're also talking about capitalism. Right? And archaeology being very much a handmaid of, of capitalism. Right? And how do you actually sort of, I mean, of course we're part of the imperial production. Why would we be different from the 60s? I mean, that's exactly what we're doing in this room today. Right? So I think it's kind of fantastic or an illusion to pretend that we're not going to do that. How could we not be products of the West? Right? But I sort of like your idea of sort of saying, what if we stop sort of trying to create a hegemonic or sort of monolithic narrative or history and rather see those multiple histories, right? So the concern, and, and I agree with sort of your ending of sort of archaeology about the present, the here and now, right, is really about power, right? And trying to understand how power works and how archaeology has always been an essential element of that production of power, right? And how it's very difficult to critique that because we ourselves are sort of the beneficiaries of that power as we are in this room today. So just as I said, it's a great start. And I'm really excited and looking forward to tomorrow as well. So. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what, I would say. I would say, OK, and so what? Uh, so, so we close everything, you say, and, and we No, I'm not saying no. that at all. Uh, I think that quite on the contrary, what we, we have to, to uh, uh, Gadamer, uh, the, the, the German philosopher, uh, hans Georg Gadamer, said, and I think it's going completely to, uh, uh, with your point, he said that if we want to produce um, <coughs> honest history, we have also to take in account the condition of our own historicity, where we are in, which is what you were talking about, capitalism and, and post-colonial, <laughs> things like that. 
what I think we should do or we could do, of course we cannot escape to that ideology. It's, this is absolutely impossible. But what we can do is to use archaeology as a tool to think, you see, and to use presentism, to use this material condition of the present, which, which is a, uh, a result of, 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 of our post-industrial so society, presentism, as, as an ontolog ontological condition. To use it as a tool to, 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 to give access to another past and maybe to think against presentism, to, 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 to look for some other ideas. Uh, we are just uh, intellectual. We, this, is, this is the best we can do, to dig square holes, drink beers, <laughs> and think about it. <laughs> I think that might actually be a great note. <laughs> uh, to follow up and to just sum up uh, what we heard uh, this afternoon uh, in a magnificent keynote, I think. So on the one hand, drawing on one element of Western society is a whole series of great thinkers but not just abstract ideas that have been floating around, but at the same time the point that uh, Laurent emphasized uh, that archaeology is resistance and archaeology is politics. And that, I think, sort of in this final discussion, I think was already a very good moment. And given uh, the topics of the sessions tomorrow, uh, archaeology is often in crisis and conflict, collapsed pasts, present urgencies and archaeological horizons, and the contemporary encounters and speculative futures, I'm sure all those elements uh, will be coming back. And since that starts tomorrow again, and I'll repeat the timing with a breakfast at 9, uh, 8.30 and uh, introduction at 9, uh, this would be a good time to uh, move over to that other archaeological occupation and to uh, enjoy the reception uh, that we are offering to everyone in the room here or outside. Thank you. Thank you.